Hi, I'm Deanna, and welcome to another doll makeover video. So today, guys, I'm going to be merging my two biggest obsessions, rabbits and dolls. If I'm not thinking about doll ideas or making dolls or making art in general, I'm most likely thinking about rabbits. I've been obsessed with them since I was a little kid and I actually have two of my own and, well, my channel name, Middle Rabbit, hello. <laughs> They're just so cute and perfect and sweet and adorable and, well, hey, here, look for yourself. When I was thinking of ideas for this doll, I was looking at a lot of Rainbow High makeovers and I thought it would be fun to do a collection of rabbit themed dolls that are based on different colors of the rainbow. All of my dolls so far have had natural skin tones, so I think having a rainbow collection would be a really fun way for me to explore a little bit more with color and push my style even further. For today's doll, I've decided to start with the color red. For her design, I'm incorporating a lot of pink tones as well as some rainbow colors, and I've already decided her name is going to be Ruby. Ruby's going to involve a lot of new techniques for me, and I'm really excited to get started and start making her with you. But before we get started, if you haven't already, please go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. So enough talking, let's get started. For today's rabbit repaint, I'm using a secondhand Rochelle Goyle Monster High doll. Rochelle is a gargoyle, and she has a couple of features that made her perfect for this doll. First, instead of having humanoid ears on the sides of her head, she has these bat-like ears on top of her head, which are in the perfect spot for rabbit ears. Second are her sweet and demure facial features. She has these big doe eyes that I think will translate really well into sweet rabbit eyes. Like all of my dolls, I must prep her before I can start the makeover. To begin, we will be dunking her head in boiling hot water for about a minute or so. This will heat up the rubber and glue inside her head, which will allow me to detach her head and remove her hair plugs with ease. With her hair plugs gone, the next step is to remove the factory face paint from her face and scalp. Once this is removed, I can finally start transforming this doll into my own creation. The next step is removing her bat ears by cutting around these oval seams around her ears. In theory, this should be ideal for me to add my own ears later. Fingers crossed that this works, but it should. I believe in you, rabbit ears. For my last prep step, I will apply two coats of white acrylic paint to her head and body. But I'm gonna do this off camera because it's kind of the most boring step of this process. But if you want to see how I've done it on other dolls, you can go back and watch a few of my older videos. Her paint has dried and has been sealed with Mr. Super Clear sealant. And now I'm prepping my soft pastels for her undertone coloring. After giving it some thought, I want to make her undertones green. I always like to give this touch to my dolls, and since she's going to be pink, I'm going to give her green undertones because it's a complementary color to pink. With her undertones applied and sealed, I can now start using pink soft pastels to start building up her base skin tone. Now for the contouring. I usually use brown for this step, but today I can be more playful and contour her face with a dark purple color. This will really help define her facial features. Taking a brown watercolor pencil, I'm starting to block in our doll's eyes and the surrounding areas. 
I also want to start bringing some rainbow coloring into this layer so she isn't just a flat pink color. I'm also going to go in with this brush and be heavy handed with her blush. I'm going to apply it up her temples and cheekbones and across the bridge of her nose. Now I'm taking a darker pink to define the hollows of her eyes and to further shape her nose. I'm starting to feel good about her skin, so now I'm really going to focus on her eyes. I'm giving her pink eyes because she's my red rabbit, but also I think it's fitting because some white rabbits have pink eyes too. Taking a red watercolor pencil, I'm starting to block in her makeup look. I want her to have really defined red eyeliner, and this stage will act as a guide when it's time to paint it on. After adding more tweaks to her face up, I'm coming in with paint to really define areas. I got these new brushes that are used for fingernail art, and I'm really hoping that I'll be able to achieve the fine details that I want with them. I'm holding my breath and starting to apply her eyeliner. It's not good to have a shaky hand when applying makeup, and these brushes are just what I needed for these super fine lines. They have also been very helpful when applying this deep purple color, which I'm using to define her eyes and lash line. And we can't forget my favorite, catch lights, which I'm making smaller this time to make the eyes look more open. I love freckles and beauty marks, so I can't resist giving her pink freckles all over her cheeks. And now for the lips. Using this pink watercolor paint, I'm lining her outer lips and filling them in with the same color. Starting at the corners of her mouth, I'm applying the same dark purple color I used to define her eyes. It looks a little crazy at first, but once I'm done, I'm hoping to have a kind of moody and glossy ombre lip.
Rochelle's original eyebrows gave her an almost worried expression, and I really liked that for some reason, so I want to give our doll a similar kind of furrowed brow shape. Let's start transforming her body. Like her face, I'm giving her green undertones before I apply the pink base skin tone. I'm going to give her two coats of this pink soft pastel color, and then I'm going to spritz watered down watercolor paint to give her skin texture. The end result looks a little gory. And after it dries, I'm going to give her another layer of pink pastels and then seal this layer with Mr. Super Clear Sealant. Now it's time to give her body more dimension by blushing and shading. Just like I did on the face, I'm using a vibrant pink color for the blushing and a darker purple for the shading. I love seeing all the different colors coming through. The hints of green go really well with the pinks and purples of her skin tone. The next part of the body transformation is giving her legs some tattoos. Here's a little concept sketch I did for them. I've been seeing these really great blackout and floral tattoos lately, and since this is our pink rabbit, I think the floral theme would work really well. Because paint tends to chip around the joints, I really want to be mindful of how I apply it around the knees. I've got our doll in my tattoo chair, and to start things off, I'm marking how far up I want it to go on each leg. Her tats won't be perfect twins of each other, but I want them to be fairly even. Next, I want the tops of the tattoos to be solid black boxes, but with floating petals inside. So here, I'm sketching the petals in. On her lower legs, I'm sketching in the basic shape of an orchid flower on each leg. I'm going to try to have them look as similar as possible as I can, but they're each going to be their own unique piece. Now that I'm happy with the sketches, I'm going to start the underpainting of the tattoos. The color will start to fade from the solid black color down to this watercolor inspired red shade. Off camera, you can see that I painted in the dark parts on one leg, and I'll show you the process on the other. I didn't want to use a true black color, so I combined purple with green to make a deep color that's still complementary to her pink tones. As I move down her leg, I'm thinning out the paint to get a softened watercolor application. After I let the dark paint dry, I'm picking up the pigment directly from a watercolor pencil, and I'm starting to apply washes of color into the flowers and flower stems.
time to see if my rabbit ear plan is going to work. I'm going to be forming her ears out of Sculpey clay, but first I will need to make little ear armatures out of tin foil. This will give me a basic shape that I can build her ears around. Now I'm rolling out the clay and shaping it around the foil. I'm doing my best to smooth out the clay and I will be sanding these after they're baked. But if there are some bumps and lumps, I'm not too worried since we're going to be covering these in fuzz in just a little bit. Now that I've confirmed that the ears fit in the ear hole slots, I'm going to go ahead and bake and sand them off camera. Once they're ready, I'll secure the ears into the ear slots using epoxy sculpt. So now that I'm back, you can see that I did a little reconstruction to the ears post baking. I thought the original ears were way too long, so I cut them down and reshaped them using more epoxy sculpt. Now I'm going to be making velvety flocking powder for her ears. Now for this step, I must give credit where credit's due. I learned how to do this from Etalon's White Rabbit video, which I will link below in my description. To make the fuzzy rabbit fur, Etalon made flocking out of yarn fuzz, and that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm brushing out the white yarn wefts, which is giving me a bunch of white fluff. I'm going to save these wefts for later because it's the fluff I'm really after. Here I'm starting to snip the fluff up into a super fine flocking powder, and then per Etalon, I'm adding a layer of glue to the ears and going to press the fluff into the glue, let it dry, and then keep fluffing until I'm happy with the fluffization. Once I'm happy with the consistency of the fluff, I'm also going to squeeze the ears to shape it while the glue is still wet. Next, I'm coming in with a couple different shades of pink soft pastels to color in the inside of her ears and give the rest of her ears a little dusting so they aren't just a flat white color. Now that the ears are properly fluffy, I'm going to start working on her actual hair. Now if you watched my last video, then you know that I struggled while making hair wefts for that doll. So for this doll, I challenged myself to improve on my weft making skills. I studied a lot of different techniques, and for Ruby's hair, I decided to make it out of this multi-tonal acrylic yarn. Now that I have the hair wefts, I'm going to give her a long hairstyle with a center part. I learned how to do this by following along with one of Mosiko's hair tutorials. This involves gluing and flipping the hair over so the weft seams aren't visible, and it definitely took me a couple of tries to get it right. Now that the part is in, I'm going to start putting in rows of hair wefts starting at the bottom of her hairline and working my way back up to the top of her head. Now that I'm at the top of her head again, I have to start working around her ears and filling in the random gaps with smaller wefts. Thank you. 
I was kind of stumped when I was thinking about how to apply the hair wefts around the ears so that the seams of the wefts won't show. And then I had a total duh moment and I realized that I should do the same folded over method that I did on her hair part over these areas. Her hair is looking a little punk rock and messy, so I'm going to redefine her part line and brush it out into perfection off camera. Let's talk outfit. This video is getting a little long, so off camera I sewed this little dress for her. I love black and white graphic patterns paired with red, and I'm going to continue the red theme with a little fuzzy jacket to go with this dress. To continue with my weft making practice, I made her furry red coat using more yarn wefts. Right now, I'm attaching the sleeves that have the same window pane pattern as the dress. Now that the sleeves are attached to the bodice of the jacket, I can flip it right side out for the finished look. Just got to get this sleeve to turn out. Any second now, please. And here's her fuzzy red jacket. Next time I'll use fur fabric, but I felt like I had more control using yarn wefts this time, and I absolutely love it. Now it's time to put her outfit on and start putting her back together. For her shoes, I pulled this pair out of my supply and I think they came from a Draculara doll. I don't want to rely on my stock for shoes forever, but right now I'm in the process of studying and figuring out how I want to make future pairs of shoes. I think these go really well with her outfit for now at least. And before we're done, I had the last minute idea of taking one of these little mini pom-poms and gluing it onto her backside to give her a little bunny tail. Here is the end result of my rabbit girl transformation. What do you think of her? I love how fuzzy her ears are and I'm also very happy with how her hairstyle turned out. I really liked working with hair webs this time and I'm definitely planning on working with yarn webs more in the future. Leave me a comment and let me know what you think of Ruby. And let me know what you'd like to see with other future Rainbow Rabbit dolls. I love interacting with you guys and learning about what you like and what you don't like. And you guys have helped me so much in such a little time to grow as a doll artist. And I'm so lucky to have this community of amazing people. If you want to keep up with what I'm doing, please subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button to get notifications. I'm really excited about the next few dolls I've got lined up and you aren't going to want to miss out. I'm going to go play with some cloth swatches and I'll see you next time with another doll makeover. Bye!